Hello and welcome back to Sprite Guard Plays Hyper Rogue Classic. We have an update today, and so let's check it out, see what we can find, uh, see how many of them we can visit uh, without losing. So I have been, yeah, where has Classic been? Well, uh, the last episode that I tried to record went really sour, and I spent a lot of time trying to fix it in editing, and it just didn't work out. And then I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to leave it hanging, but I also don't want to... Oh, I just, I just wasn't sure how to, you know, continue it, close it out. Now, in this update, there is a new basic land, so let's see if we can find it. There it is. This is the hunting ground. The happy hunting ground is the place where hunting is easy. The spirits of hunters go here after their death, if their life was deemed worthy. You did not qualify, though, so you will not ever be able to find your way to the places where the hunter spirits and game are, and their hunting dogs will hunt you instead. You hope to use this to learn some skills in fighting in an open, hyperbolic space, though. Okay, so let's check it out. So this is... I believe it's just like the Mirrored Land. So we have hunting dogs that are guarding turquoise and as as usual we can't go near mobs oh my goodness the um the messages have moved that's very nice new achievement hunted one collected turquoise so now we have these two after us and we have to get away from them, and we have to bend in a certain direction. And I believe we just have to bend in the exact opposite direction, yes. Uh, so when they're on two hexes like this, those two hexes are part of a great wall line. The line running between them, between two heptagons, is along a the same kind of line that the great wall follows where you have heptagon, hexagon, hexagon, heptagon, and then a pair of hexagons, and that's where the gates are. And so spotting that is a good way of figuring out what direction you should go from a heptagon, and that's something that I just figured out as I'm saying this, and I'm kind of winging it, but I kind of was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's how you figure it out. So here we go again straight away and you got it and then there's another one coming from farther away that we have to fight off so now things are getting a bit more dangerous and we have a f quite a few groups over here and I don't know you know it seems like I'm getting basically the same combinations but you're seeing those pings from far away uh, when I pick those up, and that's the, uh, the dogs coming up on you. Now, I remember that, uh, Zeno tweeted a challenge where you had the, uh, orb of the dragon. So now we have three dogs appearing, and these two to deal with. We don't want to wake those two up before then. And uh, apparently it's possible even if si uh, 60 dogs appear around you uh, and you have an orb of the dragon, you can actually escape. So now maybe, I mean, maybe this is what it takes. You know, I have talked about before on this on this show about how it's very difficult for me to slow down and take the game a little bit more seriously. And this seems to be doing it, and I don't know why. But like, here I am, really paying attention to the tactics. Paying attention to which dogs are going to get here first. And moving slowly. And that's something that I think playing, you know, as I mentioned before, I think that playing Caves of Cud and Heat Signature 
has made me more cautious because, you know, I talked about getting a little... Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is not quite what I expected. Okay, so only a few of these dogs are actually after us. Okay, so now we're in a little bit of trouble uh, with synchronization. We have two dogs that are two steps away. One dog that's one step away. And I'm worried about getting pinched by the ones that are two steps away, but we should be able to step off of... No. We will not be able to step off of this space because... Um, we have to wait one turn and then we have to kill this dog which is going to keep us on this cell for uh, two turns. So I believe this dog is live. Oh yeah, their, their eyes change color. So this dog is going to come up to this cell right here, and this one will come up to this cell, and that's a classic pincher position. And so we have to figure something else out. And so I'm going to step onto this heptagon because it's close. Uh, it's the one that's closest to dogs. It's the heptagon that I can reach, of these two that I can reach, that is closest to other dogs. However, there's going to be two dogs closing in on us. And I believe they're actually... Okay, so if I do that, um, then... These two dogs might actually, if this one goes here, then I'm going to be in a position where I'm getting pushed back towards these dogs. And so maybe it's better, let's see, if I step here, I'll have dogs um, there and there after me. And that will, again, be kind of pushing me back. And so it seems like this space, I really don't like this space because it's pushing me into the circle a little bit farther towards having all of the dogs reach me at the same time. And I really don't like that. Now we could step onto a hexagon. Uh, we could step onto this hexagon would get us one dog. Would it put us into a classic pincher position though? It looks like it might. Because this dog will come one, two, up to here. And this dog will come one, two, up to here. And we have to do one, two to kill this dog. So I don't like any of these options. I feel like this one leaves me the most choices. But now here, uh, we're in a situation where... I It looks like several steps ago, I put myself into a bad situation without realizing it. And it looks like this is already game over. Which is kind of expected for a brand new... Um, Brand new land. Uh, I had actually read some people saying that they thought that this was the hardest of the uh, starter lands now. Uh, because if we step here, it's going to be a pincher. This guy will go to this cell. This guy will go to this cell. Uh, we cannot step to any other cell because they're all being guarded. I was wrong. Okay. So something about my read of the tactics was incorrect, and I'm not sure... I remember... that if there are two cells that are equidistant from the player, I think the dogs actually choose randomly. So that was just... that was a 50-50, saved my hide. Now we gotta line these guys up. 
And so now we have a little bit trickier of a lineup position. And so I'm looking for the line of escape. Now, uh, there's, there's these lines that I refer to as eternal motion lines that are basically, uh, instead of taking a great wall line, like where you would cross this pair of hexagons here, instead you pick one of the hexagons and continue along to the next heptagon. You know, in, instead of going hexagon, heptagon, you go hexagon, hexagon, heptagon, hexagon, hexagon, heptagon. So, if you do that away from a dog, that dog will get pushed behind you. And that's why I use it in the Land of Eternal Motion. And, uh, and then, if you have dogs coming from the other side, then it's very easy to just change that up and bend it in the other direction. So there we go. So we escaped a situation that probably should have been game over. That was very much one of those situations where I didn't play well, I got lucky. I played badly, and I got lucky. Okay, so now we have a different situation here. We have dogs, one on a hexagon, one on a heptagon. Now, something I remember Zeno saying a long time ago is that the hyperbolicness of the game is contained in the heptagons. When you move along the hexagons, there's you don't um, you don't leave things behind. Like if you follow, I think they're called centipede lines. Um, they're the lines that the rock snakes follow. If you follow one of those, you don't leave things behind, even though it is a straight line, uh, because it's there are just. The curves that go alongside of it are just close enough to it, and it zigzags just enough. And so in order to get the hyperbolic benefit, you have to go through a heptagon. So if I step to this cell, this guy will move here, this guy will move... No good. But if I move here... They'll both, they'll still both come up to me, but there will be, I'll have the opportunity to then, you know, make this step. Once again, however, we have dogs coming in from every direction and we have to be mindful of them. And so we have to figure out if there is a path is there a path that will take us between two of these dogs while escaping? Because if you look at it, the path that would line these two up straight away is taking us straight toward this dog. But there are two paths that are take that can take us uh, farther away. This looks like the line of um, the the freedom line. Because we have these, these hexagons and heptagons going straight away this way. It's also possible there's a freedom line. It looks like these two might be equidistant. And it may just be easier to see the line of escape here. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at... You know, what, which of these heptagons do I feel like I can reach? And I feel like this one, this is the one I'm going to aim for. And it looks like that's going to be our line of escape. It looks like we're going to pass through this heptagon before either of the flanking dogs get to us. And so assuming... There are no other flanking dogs. We should be good. So now we bend... Let's see. 
So we have these two dogs, so we're just going to line them up. And then we're going to come through another one of these. And unfortunately, we can't bend to the right because there's those dogs there. So we're just going to stay on this Great Wall line. And we won't lose any speed by doing that. And now I think they're lined up. Yes. So I think that this land, because of the kind of trouble it puts you in, is forcing me to play more carefully. Oh dear, there are a couple more. Okay. So I don't know if there's like, there's rogue dogs at this point. Now I want to see if there's any treasures. Yeah, it looks like there's uh, wild dogs at this point. I want to see, are treasures always on hexagons? It looks that way. And we have a crossroads right here, and so I'm kind of thinking, like... Well, okay, so we want to get... We really need to get the orb from this land, and I'm actually thinking about something else. Oh, two treasures. Oh. Guarded by two pairs of dogs, and I wonder if they're going to both activate at the same time. No. Okay. So, same situation as before, but let's see. Guarding. Hunting. 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 Can't tell if there's one up here. So I'm looking at our lines of escape. And nothing looks great. But I feel like this direction could be promising. I think, once again, we can squeeze through here. Yes. And so assuming that we don't get waylaid by rogue dogs... We should be fine. And we have to keep looking for rogue dogs. We can't just assume that there won't be any as we kind of chew through this. So we only need one more. So, uh, yeah, Zeno kind of <laughs> scolded me a little bit, much deservedly. New achievement, hunting dog. Collect ten turquoise. All right, so now we actually found one that's on a, a head... Heptagon. So yeah, he, he pointed out that the game's balanced around getting lost, and I have an aversion to getting lost. And I have not been playing very well because of that. Let's see, I think we want to go... This way. Yes. Bend away from the dog behind you. And that's line them up. And I'm not going to count this tenth treasure until, until we've got them all tucked away. There we go. So, yeah. The game is, is balanced around getting lost, and I, I made some really bad plays in the last orb strategy because of that. Now, I do want to get to the other lands, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that to consciousness. I'm going to really focus on trying to play this game more as intended, and that kind of ties into something that I talked about last time is... 
trying to find the fun in some of the stuff that I don't completely have buy-in with. All right, I should I should not split my mind. I do want to look here. Okay, so we've unlocked the Orb of Ferocity. Whenever you attack with this orb, you also hit the monsters adjacent to you and opposite to the monster you originally attacked. Very nice. That could be extremely useful in strategy mode. So let's take a look at uh, what the other areas are. I don't remember them all by name, so I'm just going to have to spot them. Volcanic Wasteland. 60 treasures, 10 elixir. So we're right here at a an alchemy lab, so we can do that. So, bringing it back, looking for the fun, we're going to be trying to enjoy lands in new ways, especially lands that I don't normally enjoy. And we're going to really try and focus on finding the fun so I don't overlook it, because you know how unobservant I can be in this game sometimes. Sometimes I will even overlook the fun. There's a lot of cool new stuff coming up. Really interesting stuff here, and uh, I am looking forward to finding it. Let's see. We cannot get out through here. I would kind of like to because... Well, I, I still haven't actually decided whether or not uh, 25 ice diamonds are worth the risk. It's relatively low risk, and this is a good... Okay, so I'm going to let the game make the decision for me, because we have a crossroads right here. We have our 30 treasures. So we need feathers, and we need 60 treasures overall. And so now I'm now I'm kind of going back to my speedrunning routes. And oh, you know what? And I'm thinking about like, is this going to interfere with the let's play? And I just realized we've been going for a while. We need to find a land of eternal motion and uh, wrap this up for today. Um, I want to get to all of the lands in the new update eventually. But that's going to take us a while and will probably take us multiple runs. I have learned a lot about this game since the last time we had a classic episode. And classic, I think, is going to be a much better format for sharing that with you. Uh, because it's, it's a little bit brisker. And uh, there's, I think, less risk of completely trapping myself. Uh, I feel like in the strategy run, I've kind of squeezed myself out where there's certain orbs that I need that I've spent and I don't have a good way of getting more of them. And so I just don't have what I need. Like, the orb that I would need to get into... Um, the Hall of Mirrors, in order to uh, finish that up, uh, is the Orb of Thorns. And uh, you saw the problems I had getting the Orb of Thorns. Though Xeno gave me some tips, and that was actually what the well-deserved scolding was about. And it wasn't really a scolding. Once again, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. It was, it was more of a pro tip. But very, very much appreciated. All right, so we're in the crossroads. We're on the hunt for an orb of safety. We have the 25 Phoenix Feathers, so they should be spawning anywhere. But crossroads is just, it's the classic. 
It's the place where you go to find orbs, because they're always there. Lots of orbs of speed. I'm just gonna pick those up while we're here. Wow! Lots of orbs of speed. I am okay with that. But, yeah, I, I don't know how long this episode has gone, but uh, I'm really, really happy with it. I have not been, like, super happy with an episode, and I thought this was going to be a horrible episode. It is two in the morning right now. And I thought that I was just going to be too worn out from my day, but I feel great. So until next time, thank you very much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.